Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to help you determine whether Ledger Recover is safe for you. So let's get started. All right, so Ledger Recover was recently released, and there's been a lot of controversy surrounding it. And the number one question I get on my YouTube channel about anything, be it a wallet or an exchange or a new crypto, is, is it safe? So I'm going to try to address that question today about Ledger Recover. Now, I already have my own preconceptions about the safety of this process, but I'm going to try to approach it objectively and sort of reveal what I think along the way. So the first thing we'll need to do to use Ledger Recover is run the firmware update. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this new firmware update, how it creates a backdoor. So if you don't want to use this service, uh, the only choice you have right now is to, actually you have two choices, right? You can go ahead and run the firmware update and choose not to use the service. But because people are concerned about this new functionality, a lot of people are choosing not to run the firmware update at all. Uh, and that might you might be in that camp, and I'm in that camp at the moment with my go-to ledger device. Unfortunately, you cannot stop running firmware updates, right? Firmware updates add functionality and new security features, and it's unrealistic to think that you can just sort of limp along without running firmware updates in the long term, right? You might be able to avoid it for five or six months or a year, but eventually you're going to need to run the firmware update. So we're at that point, right? So uh, here is the, uh, the crux of the issue that a lot of people have and I have. Uh, who has access to my wallet with Ledger Recover? Right? They say that it's split into three pieces using a Shamir backup process and that each fragment is useless on its own. Right, And their security model is to send it to three different companies, CoinCover, uh, Ledger itself, and another backup provider. According to this article, the third entity would be escrow tech. Now, in order to create this backup uh they're saying that you will have to uh, create an ID which verifies your identity before you begin this process, right? And you have to sign up for the service uh, and pay for it uh, 10 bucks a month, whether you use it or not, right? But they're not really clear on what constitutes the criteria for uh, a restore during this process. Generally, when you do a restore, you're going to have a blank device. It's either going to be a replacement device or it's going to be the original device which has been completely reset. When a device is reset, it retains no information about its previous configuration. So there will be nothing on the device itself which will allow Ledger uh, or the ledger servers to verify the device itself as being the original device that was backed up, right? So we cannot count on the device itself having any kind of crypto key or anything that's going to verify that, yes, indeed, this is my dev device, right? So it could be anybody's device. Anybody's device in anywhere in the world could try to restore using my information. What's going to prevent them from doing that? Well, they talk about this ID, uh, this... Uh, this ID verification. And then they're talking about that it can only be done on the device, right? So while well, we have a blank device, right? And I'm holding it, so uh, that means it's mine, uh, but anybody could be holding a blank device somewhere, right? So what is going to uh, constitute uh, the ability to uh, bring two of these shards together? And I'm assuming that it's whatever uh, ID verification that Ledger 
has cr has created when I uploaded all of my personal information and this short little selfie video that they mentioned, right? So that uh, my uh, my ID and my selfie video is going to be stored somewhere on Ledger servers. That's my assumption, right? But they're not very clear about that. So when I attempt to recover to a blank device, uh, they're going to verify my identity and then allow two of the shards to come together, whether they be from Ledger or CoinCover or uh, escrow or this, this uh, escrow tech, right? So here again, you know, they're saying it is only me that can do this, right? So, but if these shards, if any two shards can recreate the uh, private key or the recovery phrase, uh, what's to stop any two of these entities from simply combining their shards to gain access to my cryptocurrency? even if Ledger has a process of some kind, right? Because we've already determined that there's nothing on the device uh, cryptographically that's going to verify all of this, right? The device is not going to be able to say, you know, send like the genuine check. The genuine check sends a cryptographic key stored on the device to the Ledger servers to determine whether your device is genuine or not. But we're not going to get that with Ledger Recover because a blank device is not going to have any information to verify cryptographically the previous configuration, right? Once you have a new device or a reset device, there's nothing on the device that's going to, you know, be able to communicate with the ledger servers cryptographically. So all we really have is our trust in ledger to make sure that when a recovery process is initiated, it is recover it is initiated by me. So how are they going to do that? Uh, when I sit down in front of my computer and tell them I want to do a recover, I'm assuming that I'll be I'll need to be logged into my recovery account that I created, right? Even though we don't know how that's going to work yet. So that will be their criterion to say, okay, now we'll allow uh, this particular user that is logged into this account to initiate a recovery process of two shards from well that doesn't sound very cryptographically secure to me that sounds like just logging into my amazon account or logging into my facebook account right or logging into my bank uh all of these th these uh centralized logins are vulnerable to some kind of hacking and Ledger doesn't have a great track record in protecting uh, customer data. So suppose there's a breach of their servers and the customer data that is being stored on their servers is leaked out. So uh, that would be bad even in the, that would be bad just for our personal data. But if something like that happens, would another person in another location with an empty device be able to recreate my account and uh, log into Ledger as me using that data? Uh, and how secure is that login data itself? Right. What's to prevent a hacker from logging in to my recover account and convincing Ledger that I'm the one that's logged in? Right. What what safeguards do they have against this? We don't know. Right. So also another problem is that uh, even if Ledger claims that only the person logged into the account has access to the two shards to do a recovery process. Cryptographically, any two shards are all that's needed to uh, restore a device. If you have a Shamir backup in principle, and that's what this is, any two of the pieces put together can restore the recovery phrase. 
So you don't really need to go through the process of ledger recover for this to happen. So if either if any two of these entities are hacked because they are centralized exchanges, if any two of these uh, entities are hacked and these uh, lists of uh, shards are leaked, then anyone, then a hacker could combine any two shards to recreate a, uh, a, re a valid recovery phrase, right? You don't need to go through ledger recover to do that. So it's unsafe in that sense. Also, what's to prevent any two of these entities from combining your shards under uh, collusion of some kind or under government duress of some kind? We're basically violating the principle of crypto self-custody by having these keys, encrypted or not, stored on centralized servers. Uh, so uh, Ledger needs to convince me that my ID information is cryptographically secure, even though it's stored on their centralized server. And they also need to convince me coin cover and escrow tech are cryptographically secure uh, and safe from hacking. And I don't think that they're going to be able to do that. Any centralized server is vulnerable to hacking in principle, right? Uh, now, they may be storing all of these shards in their own cryptographically secure environments, right? They might be able to convince us that uh, the way these keys are stored are in, invulnerable to any kind of hacking or leaks or anything else. But um, I'm not sure that's going to convince anyone. So uh, our cryptographic model seems to not be very secure for uh, this online recovery process. And then the, the next uh, thing I need to worry about is my personal data, my ID and my selfie that is being stored on the Ledger servers. Is this safe, right? Is it safe on Ledger servers? Is it safe while I'm doing the process? Uh, what if there's a snooper uh, in between the connection of uh, me and Ledger, right? There are so many ways that that personal information could get leaked out. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what is Ledger going to do in response to government coercion to release this data? What if the EU passes a law which compels Ledger to give them this information? Who are your customers? Uh, what are they doing? Uh, how much crypto are they using? Where is the crypto coming from? Where is the crypto going to? All of these anti-money laundering laws, all of these, uh, these financial laws that could get passed that would compel Ledger to reveal this information. How are we safe from that? I don't think we are. Here's another issue that I brought up in some of my previous videos about the uh, end user being responsible for their recovery sheet that they have written down locally. Uh, this is how you normally uh, secure your recovery phrase. The whole idea of the ledger recovery service was to uh, streamline this process for people that were not comfortable managing their own recovery phrase. But even if you use ledger recover, you will still have a copy of your phrase, which you will need to secure. So we still have this uh, you know, it's it's not preventing the neophyte from uh, mismanaging their recovery phrase because they're still going to have it. So they could lose it uh, and still recover their device, but they could also lose it and have someone else find it. They could ex they could be tricked into revealing it. So this whole area and. For those of you who may not know, the number one way that people's wallets are hacked is not because there's some hacker that's sort of circumvented the uh, security of the device or their website or Ledger Live. The number one way that people get their Ledger hardware devices hacked is by being tricked into revealing their backup phrase. This is the number one way that people get their crypto wallets hacked. 
They are tricked into revealing it by a scammer or a hacker posing as Ledger, posing as some kind of uh, recovery service uh, to help them get their crypto back. This is the number one way people get scammed out of their crypto. So this new Ledger Recover service is not going to prevent these types of hacks from recover from occurring. Okay, and so they uh, and then they also talk about what is Coin Cover. Um, you know, they they provide the gold standard of security by allowing you to uh, get your assets recovered if you lose them. But they really say nothing in here about uh, how secure are the coin cover servers, what do they do, uh, what kind of security do they implement, what kind of encryption do they implement on their servers to prevent someone from gaining unauthorized access. All right, so Ledger has taken me to new heights of wonkiness uh, because the Ledger recovery service is only available on their mobile app. Okay, and the only way to update your firmware is with the desktop app. So if all you have is a phone, you will not be able to update the firmware to your existing device unless you use a computer. If you don't have a computer, you'll have to go borrow someone's computer or whatever. So it, I just don't understand why they would make this so difficult for a desktop user. It's not even available for a desktop user for some bizarre reason. And the desktop users are the ones that are, have the ability to update their firmware to the latest version. I'm using the latest firmware, and I'm, the only way I did that was because I'm on a desktop, right? You cannot use your phone to update your firmware. So go figure. All right, so I'm in the latest version of the Ledger app and I cannot find this Ledger Recover. So uh, it doesn't appear to be functional. I just downloaded this, this app, so I know it's the latest version, but uh, I've poked around all over it and I cannot find Ledger Recover. Okay, so all of my attempts to actually go through this process uh, have basically failed. I don't believe it is available either. Uh, well, I know it's not available on desktop, which I thought it would be. Um, and I have not been able to figure out how to initiate the process uh, within the Ledger Live app. Uh, according to the website, it says that it's still coming soon. So if we go into Ledger Live, there are there is no uh, indication of how to begin the recovery process or get signed up, right? In here, there is no recover. So I guess uh, in order to actually walk through the steps, I'm going to have to wait for the service to be quote unquote available, right? So anyway, I talked a lot about my concerns and of how this will work. Uh, but I have uh, I'm not going to be able to do a full demo until the service is available uh, through the Ledger Live app. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.